I've got a question for myself, and I'd like to address it to you, too. What is Easter about in your real life? I'm not talking about in your yearly calendar. I'm talking about in your real day-by-day life. Do you have a weak Easter, or have you a strong Easter? Weak Easter has to do with simply following the obligations of the calendar, doing your kindness to God on that particular day, making yourself available for some special service or services, and that's certainly important. Strong Easter is something else altogether different. And with that in mind, weak or strong Easter, let me address just two issues. First, the meaning of Christ, the meaning of this Jesus Christ who lived among us. It's very interesting, because in Sunday school this morning, somebody said, I have such a difficulty with the work of Jesus. What's it, what's it all about? What does he really bring to us? The mystery of Jesus Christ, somehow or the other, is that in his presence, the fullness of God is pleased to dwell. That's what scripture says, but that's the experience of people who have an experience of the grace of God after the likeness of the mind and heart of Jesus Christ. His mystery is that he brings us into God's presence. But you see, the wonderful thing about Jesus is that he was not different from you and me. He was a human being just exactly as we are human beings. I very often think of that thing that we've shared here from Fred Craddock about the Easter, uh, about the Christmas Jesus. Uh, what Fred Craddock said was he had to have his diaper changed. You know, it's interesting because we don't think of Jesus that way. We sort of think of Jesus as exempt from high humanness. No, this is the one who comes to show us a little bit about what it means to be a human being. And so he comes to live with us, one among us. But he also comes to live for us because there's something about the way he lives that's an example that sort of turns on something in our own selves. Here's somebody who comes and seems to live not just for the moment, but somehow to live for the good of somebody else. He's even referred to as the man for others. Not for myself alone, but for other people around me. And so he lived, and he also dies. He dies for us. And somebody said not long ago, is Jesus died on a cross to save me from my sins. I hear people say that all the time. They say it's like, like it was some kind of a ritual that you had to say out loud in order to be accepted by God. But what that really means is, somehow or the other, that the Jesus who was one of us, who lived with us, who lived for us, and who died somehow or the other for our good is the Jesus who hears God's forgiveness and speaks God's forgiveness to you and to me. God, forgive Keith, forgive Peggy, Rhonda, Margie, whomever. And so in his life, he is thoroughly human, but in his death, he is also thoroughly human. Jesus Christ dies. King of kings, son of God, dies just exactly the way you and I someday shall die. And so if that's the Easter story, that's weak Easter, see? But then comes the other half of the reality, which is the resurrection song or more specifically, the resurrection reality, or more specifically, a personal reality of resurrection. Something in your life that happens so that this one who stepped out of the tomb by the power of God drags you and me out of the tomb too. Drags us away from a self-centered existence to a world where hospitality and generosity and goodwill for other persons and making ourselves available to whatever, in whatever way we can for the good of other people begins to ignite and cause our own lives to live in a qualitative way that we did not experience before. To live generously. So often people think what that means is to give money to people. I think it's fine for the, there to be people who are generous with their tithes and their offerings. And this is an amazingly generous part of God's people. But real generosity is the giving of self. When you give of your possessions, you give of very little, but when you give of yourself, then you truly give. And I like this whole thought. I picked it up last week in reading a devotional about getting dragged out of the tomb into resurrected life. Because some of us probably need to be pulled a little bit or dragged a little bit or called out 
just a little bit. I don't think it's good enough for us to simply say that there is an Easter and that there is a resurrection. I think what's really important is to say that somehow or the other, that Jesus that lived and died speaks to me, but somehow or the other, that Jesus that lived and was resurrected lives in me. I have seen it so many times and in so many places. I've seen it at the altar of this church when people find for the first time something alive in them that was not there before. I have seen it when people stand and walk through the valley of the shadow of death, having surrendered their most beloved to the care of one beyond us. I have seen the power of resurrection when people from this very congregation, at least two of you that I'm looking at right now, went to your most beloved and said, you can go now. Because the faith was strong enough that it was bigger than death that it is alive to life. You see, the big question is not how long shall we live, but how deeply. The big question is not what we possess and what we garner to ourselves in our living. It's what we have contributed, what we have offered as resurrection and help to other people, to those who are around us. There's so many stories that come to mind, I'm almost done. But there's so many stories that come to mind when I think about um, Easter and Easter reality. And since we're being just a little bit personal here today, I will say we have one sitting among us this day that when you ask him how he's feeling, he says, nine out of ten times, top of the world. Anybody been there yet? Anybody there right now? Because, beloved, that's resurrection reality. Even in a world like ours, with all of its pain, with all of its agony, with all of its loss, with all of its challenge, with all of its misunderstanding, there are sometimes people that look not at an ideal world through rose-colored lens, but at a real world and still say, it's worth it. It's worth living. And I hope you and I will get to the place, since I fell in the hole, you know, a lot of you have been kind enough to say, how are you, preacher? (laughs) And what you sometimes want to say, well, oh, my side, oh, my my leg real hurts. You know what I'm learning how to say? Better. Thank God. I used this not very long ago, but I'm going to use it again with absolutely no apology because God put it on my heart to close the sermon. Carl Akers lived and died with us in this church. Carl Akers was one of the great saints. You're a great saint, too. And one day people will remember you. But... Carl told me something. He said, when God came into my life, when I had my first real experience of coming alive to God, I decided when people asked me how I was, I would answer differently. And so when you ask Carl how he was, he always said, better and better. And then he, I want to say it one more time. I like it so much. Better and better. (laughs) How are you? Better and better. I had the unspeakable privilege of being with Carl the last night of his life. He had pancreatic cancer. We took turns, church people, sitting with him. It was morning about 2.30, 3 o'clock, and big grandfather's clock rang. He said, uh, Keith. He called me Brother Keith. I said, yes, sir. He said, can you do me a favor? I said, sure. He said, can you come get in bed with me? I said, sure. He said, could you get back to back with me? And so here we were in the bed, back to back, terrible pain, difficulty breathing, clock rang. I said, listen to the clock ring. He said, yeah. I said, how you doing, old man? He said, better and better. And he said, in the morning, I will be well. And he was. Strong Easter is the reality that you and I have not only a day and time to live well and generously and with hospitality now, but it means that there is time after time where the resurrection begun will become the resurrection continued. Blessed be the name of our resurrected God who offers us life. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, right where we are, each of us in our own place, each of us in our own way, remembering not just the stories we mentioned or the persons we've touched, 
But our own times of down and our own times of up, will you please be for us the Easter reality? Because we want to have a lot more than a day on a calendar. We want to have a heart fully and completely alive. However long we live, God, fill it with life. Life. In Jesus' name. Amen.